Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Silver Screen. I'm Robert Haynes, and with me is the lovely... Ladies and gents, it's that time of the evening for you to unwind, pull up a chair, pour yourself a glass of wine, and get ready for another episode of Silver Screen. We're the best show to get your local and international movie news, from the local box office through to the international entertainment headlines. Right, I think we need to start with the box office this week and take a look at the incredible worldwide performance of Logan, starring Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. It's not the film everybody was, was anticipating and seems to be playing more as an intimate drama than a superhero movie. Logan, what did you do? Charles, the world is not the same as it was. Mutants. They're gone now. I hurt myself today To see if I still feel I focus on the pain The only thing that's real Where is she? Beneath the stains She's like you Of time Very much like you The feelings disappear She needs our help You are Someone to come along Someone, Someone has come along I am still right here and you could have it all My empire of dirt I will let you down I will make you hurt I will keep myself I would find Look, I've seen bits and pieces of it yet. They sent us a screener and I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but the bits and pieces that I've seen are really, really good. I mean, you know me, I've got a bit of a thing against superhero movies at yeah. the moment, purely because the market's just a bit oversaturated with superhero films. This is brilliant. It's, it's essentially, it's a sort of a human drama. Mm. It's set in 2025, so it's set a few years after the last film. So they're both a little older and Patrick Stewart's character, who is Professor Xavier, yeah. he's gone a bit senile. So he's really? no longer in control <laughs> of his mental powers. <laughs> <laughs> which 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 makes for I a few I think I need to go see it. <laughs> <laughs> which makes for a few moments of amusement during the yeah. film. And Hugh Jackman is obviously playing it more rugged, mm. more hectic, more weather beaten. He's not healing the way he used to. Yeah. But it was a really, really solid drama. And the nice thing about it is that the film it's got an R rating. Now what an R rating is in the States is essentially it's the same as having a sixteen age restriction in this country, mm. which is unusual for this type of superhero yeah. movie. Yeah. Normally they go with a PG-13 yeah. or a 10 or something like that and they cater into the whole family. This is an adult orientated film. The language flies, the violence flies, it's a hectic wow. film. So it's something to look out for. Yeah. No. 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 I think the whole film feels different in tone, character-wise than any of the others. And that was sort of our goal. I didn't want it to feel like the final chapter of a saga but a whole fresh new thing, stake some new ground. And so what James Mangold and Scott Frank did is kind of create a world of someone whose biggest fear is love and intimacy, because um, that only brings pain, of surrounding him with a family forced upon him. She's like you, very much like you. I am not whatever it is you think I am. She needs our help. Logan has always been a difficult personality. Independent, sometimes aggressive, sometimes mean-spirited and hostile, but essentially with his heart in the right place. Uh, now uh, there has been a, a turnaround and the carer is Logan and the vulnerable, weak, fragile one is Charles. The controlled, intelligent, sensitive, intellectual has been replaced by a scatterbrained, crazy, fearless.
physically uh, fragile and highly dangerous individual. Hello. You know you gotta pay for that, right? Hey, come on. Not okay! The whole point of making the film was to really help you feel the weight and iconic nature of this character, his unique character in the, in the world of, of superheroes, um, his reluctance, his hesitance, his own modesty, his incredible rage, and yet tender heart at the same time. So what did you see this week that you liked and maybe what you didn't like? Okay, what I liked was Jackie. Mm -hmm. I saw Jackie. Um, I loved it. I loved the emotion behind it. And um, Natalie Portman was absolutely amazing. That was an incredible oh, performance. She was absolutely brilliant, down to the way she spoke. And oh, it was just out of this world. But now do you see why I had a go? at little Emma Stone yeah, for I'll, winning her Oscar for, for La La Land I'll over Natalie Portman. I'll hand that to you. Yeah. I'll hand that to you. She should have won. When will Jack join us? The president will join you in the Monroe room at the end of the tour. You'll be great. They want to hear from you. Excuse me. For the next hour, Mrs. John F. Kennedy invites you to visit the President's house and see some of the restorations she's made in its interior. The White House tour is probably the most watched television show of all time at that point. I want to thank you for letting us visit uh, your home. I don't think any television cameras have ever gone up there. That's right. Pablo was very enamored of it and thought it was a really interesting window into who she was before the assassination. Are all the pieces from Lincoln's time? Yes, they are. The most famous one, of course, is the Lincoln bed. She would explain what happened to Lincoln's wife after Lincoln was assassinated. Lincoln's widow died destitute, had to sell all her furniture. And she will face the same fate two years after. If I sell some of it back now, maybe I can put John and Caroline through school. I was like, look, it's the same story. We have to use this. Action. Pablo did a phenomenal job in recreating the White House tour. They built the White House in Paris. I mean, it was really crazy. It's seamless when you watch the old footage versus the new footage. Shot by shot, it's a replica. We don't even change a single word. This piano was designed by Franklin Roosevelt with the eagle support. The framing to the way that Jackie speaks, to the costumes, to every sort of element. Here is what the White House did to President Lincoln, the strong man with the arched eyebrow. The camera work, I think, was really incredible, the way that they were able to match the original. This is the East Room, as Americans have known it now for 60 years. That's right. Pablo used real footage, I mean, the actual interview. From distances, it's Jackie, and other times, it's Natalie. You cannot really know which one is the original footage and which one is our footage. You have this grainy cinematography in black and white. The cameras they used back then, they have a technology with tubes, and we used that to capture this old video format. It's just exactly how he was made. What happens when the next president's wife comes into the White House? In the past, you see, they could sell it or throw it out. I think it was a great element to have in the film. What do you think of the changes that she's made? It allows you to see Jackie before all this tragedy. Well, I think the uh, great effort that she's made has been to bring us much more intimately in contact with all the people who were legendary, but who actually were alive and were in these rooms. And what was the other movie you saw that you said you were a little bit traumatized oh, by? I was absolutely traumatized. Yeah. I saw King Cobra. Yeah. It's basically about the adult film industry. Mm -hmm. um, it was too explicit. It was a little too violent. Yeah. They are gonna love you. He's a kid. You got me into this. Do a little bitch! No, no. You gotta spend money to make money. I am willing to give you $25,000 for one video. I'm not losing you to anybody. You can't stop me from using my name. So let's go back to the ratings. If I had to ask you for a rating for Jackie? Oh, for Jackie, uh, a nine. A nine? Yeah. Okay, so a near perfect that, nine. Yeah, 
a near perfect nine. And King Cobra, what would you rate that a out two. of ten? A two. A terrible Actually, two. Actually, no, a one. A one. A <laughs> dismal one. A dismal one, yeah. I'm going to be taking a look at the movie Kalushi, the Solomon Mashlangu story. Did I say that correctly, Nobs? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. It's an almost great South African film. I thought the performances were very strong from Tabu Rametsi, and the production design was absolutely stunning for a film that was set in Soweto in the 70s. They spent some real money on this. The prosecution, please lay the charges against the accused before this court. Two counts of murder and causing fear and distress in the public domain. My name is Solomon Masham. I live in Mamalodi, C2 in the Vela section. There's gonna be a match on the 16th of June in Soweto. Eh? I want you guys to come. Soweto made us anger. It made me anger. Policemen killing children. What? Afrikaans? We were tired of only having stones to throw while you shoot us with bullets. We were going to fight fire with fire. Solomon Mafangu and Mondi Motlan have a common purpose. They left the country together. They underwent military training together. You're not mercenaries. You're freedom fighters. Are we clear? Yes, sir. And together, they terrorized the people of South Africa. They had a common purpose. And that purpose was murder. Welcome to Pretoria Central Maximum Security Prison. When you leave here, it'll be in a coffin. There is no punishment that you can lay out in this court. No law. No government can pass. And it will kill the will of the people. Because we will fight. We will continue to fight. Until all our people are free. great it looks great to me you see the the, the problem with Kalushi was it, it is a great film and mm -hmm. don't get me wrong there's a lot of elements to it that are that are excellent but it's one of those films that felt too short you know really? normally you know oftentimes South African films it's almost like the producers have got this mad obsession to have a film that's 90 to 100 minutes long this was 105 minutes but the thing is is it's the kind of story that lends itself to a film that can go for two, two and a half, even yeah. three hours. It's a big, epic yeah. story that take, it takes place over a decade. And it is a riveting film. And there's a lot of really, really, really solid aspects to it. Again, for me, this is a very mature movie. South African cinema is coming of age. And it's deftly directed by cinematographer Mandla Dube. It just, as I said to you, it just felt a little bit yeah. choppy for me in terms of the editing. It's almost like they expect you to be heavily invested in characters, yeah. but the characters are only on screen for like 10 minutes. So it's like, you can only be so invested in a character emotionally if the character isn't given enough screen time. So mm. it's one of those forms mm. that I just think could have been longer. So yeah. I would give Kalushi yeah. an excellent eight. Really? Yeah. So do yourself a favor, it yeah. opens on Friday. Okay. Go and have a look at it this weekend I and will. then we will get your review next, next week. Next week, yeah. Speaking of the boom in the local film industry, a few weeks ago we chatted to the producer and one of the stars of the new Afrikaans comedy, Camp Terrain. The film opens on March the 24th. Here's that chat. I've said that I've been all the stars in 35 years back here. And I'll be damned if I don't have my last school for you. Listen! Not so well. Is your friend sicker? You live in your own car of fun, right? Just make it easy. No, to 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 your left, to your left, to your left. You see, we're buying a little bit for Stanti. Chapa Lala, stand on my plaque. That's Kumalo. Joining me in studio now is Johan Beermeyer and Juanita de Villiers. You guys are here to promote your new film. Johan, tell me a little bit about the film. The film's name is Camp Terrain. It's about a camping site. And what happens in this, uh, at this camping site 
at a resort, one of the Arctic Coffee resorts. I play Susan Fischer, I'm one of the families that um, are regular campers um, and um, our family life and, and that's what this beauty, this movie so beautiful, it's all about families and how how the, how they, the dynamics work in relationship with one another. It looks like it's quite a nice sort of cross-section of actors and actresses from all walks of life in the film. Tell me a little bit about a couple of your cast members, who else can we expect to see in the film? Hello Finta, very big um, Afrikaans actor, we have Kaz McFadden also very big, we have um, Josias, they will remember him from Istidingo and even Zanande is from Istidingo. It's a fun comedy. Yes, and what's so wonderful about this story, it's about human and how friendships developed between these different families and that, that, that's very special. Who are, your, who are your main investors in the film? A guy by the name of U.S. Smiths, DW Profile Services and uh, Engineering. How do you attract investors? Well, it's all about risk and return. Um, there's a good return, but obviously a, a huge risk for that return. Shwanita, how did you get involved in this film? Well, I got the audition um, and luckily I got the role. And what other roles have you I've played? I've done The Ontwaking. Uh, it's more Afrikaans stuff actually. Um, the Ontwaking, Swimmer Sean Nice now was a big one. And what do you think as an actress in terms of this, it's almost a resurgence that we've seen in South African film in the last sort of three, four years or so. It's, it's, it's quite incredible. Tell me a little bit about what your feelings on that are. It was so difficult when I started um, or when I finished at the Velocity because there wasn't movies and I want to do movies and TV and so forth. And luckily the last five years um, I've done six films and j just because there's some you know, money that's pushed into the film industry and that's so wonderful for, uh, for us because now we have work and now I can say I'm a professional actor because... A working actress. A working actress, <laughs> yes. So that is wonderful, so please don't stop. Johan, what do you have lined up after this, after, after, after Camp Terrain? Well, at this stage we're looking at Camp Terrain Two. Uh, You're already looking at a sequel and the first one hasn't been released yet. That's very ambitious. <laughs> Initially when we decided to make the movie, we sent the script to the UK to be looked at. And one of the comments yeah. uh, of the guy that looked at it was that uh, there's franchise possibilities for this movie. We've got a training academy and this training academy prepares young school children to, for the movie industry. Mm -hmm. And last year, at the end of the year, we had a prize giving. Yeah. It was astounding what school children come up with um, in the short movies that they've done. What prompted you to get involved in that training academy? The industry in South Africa was like stagnant for many years. Mm. And what has now happened is that uh, the, the Afrikaans people have uh, seen it as an opportunity to, to, to comment on day-to-day -day, uh, things that happen out there. And what I like about the um, industry at the moment is uh, the people are starting to take chances with, yeah. with, with uh, difficult topics and, and, and more challenging topics. Juanito, if, if I had to give you 30 seconds to say to the audience out there why they should go and watch Come Terrain, mm. how would you sell it to them? Come Train is a fun summer human story. So I think anyone will relate to something in the movie. And that's why I would say go and watch it. Go, um, it's a popcorn movie. You don't have to think a lot. You can just enjoy it and, and, and it's a little bit naughty. And I'd like that. I see I like you that. mentioned that you were also involved in Die Ontwaking. Now yes. that was a much sort of darker, a thriller, something sort of more adult orientated. Yes. Are you excited to see the move that South African cinema is starting to make in terms of it's almost like it's coming of age. The Afrikaans people are so hard on our industry. They must remember we're only developing now and, and, and trying stuff and not, it's not usually it succeed um, but give us some room to grow and yeah. to grow up and, and that's so exciting because the next movie I'm doing is an action thriller. I would like to add on to what Yonita said. It's, it's um, we must remember, Hollywood has, they've got massive amounts of money behind mm. them. Whereas in South Africa, we've got very limited budgets. We have to shoot and we have to get it done within 
uh, 21 to a 25. Very limited time frame, We've got yeah. a limited time frame to do our thing. And if you think about the average budget in terms of South African cinema, it's between three and eight million rand. You know, if you compare that to an American budget where a micro budget film is budgeted at about anything under five hundred thousand dollars we're not even in macro budget territory a lot of the time with the current exchange rate so what we're putting on screen essentially is what you're saying is that we're getting good bang for our buck in this yes. country it's it's actually um, unbelievable what we uh, achieve and we as South Africans should actually pat ourselves on the back mm. and say yes. if we can produce what we're producing at the moment based on a limited budget uh, limited um, resources it's 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 actually uh, a miracle in itself now it's time for us to look at the local box office in terms of new films this weekend it's been a bumper weekend of new films including the hollers a little art house number opening on five screens with 50 grand uh, to be honest i'm surprised there haven't been more symptoms would loss of sight in one eye be a symptom? Possibly. And temporary paralysis? Mm -hmm. Definitely. There might have been some symptoms before today. Why wouldn't you get those checked out? He sent me to Jenny Craig. Oh my God. <laughs> Dad, temporary paralysis? I thought it was a weight thing. Then in 12th position, Jackie finally opened on our shores with a solid 320 grand of just 20 screens. Then into the top five at the local box office, and in fifth place is another new entry, Rock Dog, featuring the voices of Luke Wilson and Eddie Izzard. This opened to a bit over a million off 70 screens. So clearly the kids are into it. Is this one for you and your son? Does he like animated yeah, movies? Yeah. I'm uh, going to have is, to go and see this. So, so you're going to, so mom's going to be dragged yeah. to this one, kicking and screaming. <laughs> Bodie set off to find the music. One of the masters is heading out. Bring him to me. We get him. Get snow mountain. All right, ready? But when danger strikes, mission accomplished. You didn't even get the right spacing. Look, just he's the only one. You gotta be kidding me! Wolves, they're gonna eat the village. Boo, who can save Snow Mountain? That was your plan, Rock Dog. And fourth, Matt Damon continues to battle Chinese creatures demons and armies as this raked in another 1.08 million off 83 screens for a seven and a half million total. But the real story this week is the fabulous news around keeping up with, with the, the Kandasamis. I mean, how incredible was this opening weekend that this film had? A smaller release of just 26 screens and it managed to ring the registers to the tune of almost one 1.6 million rand, which essentially amounts to an incredible screen average of 57,000 rand. You know what the irony of this situation yeah. is, Nobs? The 57,000 rand per screen mm -hmm. that Keeping Up With The Kandasamis did beat Logan. It beat Logan really? per cinema. Logan was in 115 screens yeah. and it did 5 million. This was ju in just 26 screens and it did those kind of numbers. Now that is an incredible, yeah, incredible. average yeah. for a film like this. As I said, it rivals, it beat the Hollywood blockbuster. The only two films to beat this were Fifty Shades Darker and Second with another 1.9 million. Its total is at a whopping 28 million rand and counting. And then in first place is the adult orientated Logan, starring Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. With incredible reviews, this one clawed its way into the top spot with almost 5 million off 115 screens. And Logan's had really good reviews. It has, and the thing is, is that this is the kind of superhero film that could potentially win awards down the line if they keep making yeah. this kind of film. This is the kind of film that could really start, you know, garnering the superhero yeah. genre some real credibility. I need to go see this one as well. Yeah, you do. I think we must make a date of it next week sometime. Yeah. We'll go and see it we together. Should, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that about wraps it up for this evening's show. Remember to tweet us at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Silver Screen. Let us know if you agree with us or disagree with us. From me, Robert. And myself, Marile. It's cheers till next time, and we'll see you at the movies. Ciao for now. Cheers.
Just a step. 